got to thinking about cows and beef and game. <laughs> and I wanted to look into the Maasai a little bit because obviously they eat a fair bit of beef, <laughs> apparently. Apparently the warriors do. Apparently the rest of the tribe, the cows are not slaughtered that often. So not everyone gets a ton. But I'm just looking at these cows, these Maasai cows. And people thinking that they can compare what they're doing with beef, conventional beef, and these Maasai cows. Just looking at the cows, obviously they're a lot leaner. This is a different type of cow than what we use, you know, conventionally. And um, it's really resistant to drought. They're a bit thinner, if you can tell they have that hump and they're really good at storing water so that um, they don't have to in the dry season they can survive the um, the drought this is a different type of cow and I think just looking at it you can tell these cows are not going to have the same amount of fat as a regular cow but I thought I'd look into the science a little bit more so just comparing Wagyu beef to Holstein, um, this is a breakdown of the saturated fat here, which for Wagyu is around 41% here. And for Holstein, it's 44. And the MUFA, the monounsaturated fat, so that's kind of what's in, you know, avocado or olive oil is around 56 and 53%. This is a fat that tech that in studies is seen as more kind of neutral. And then the PUFA, I just want you to remember this number, two and two, okay? Very low PUFA. And this is what, you know, we're told is ideal, right? By, you know, a lot of paleo people or carnivore people eating these diets. But now let's have a look. This is um, composition of um, fat in pheasant, hare, red deer, roe deer, wild boar uh, in a raw and processed state because apparently when you cook it sometimes the fat composition changes a little bit but let's just take it as it is so R is raw, P is um, prepared and I'm kind of looking at deer because this is what we're kind of comparing to right this um, ruminant animal fat as, is what we're trying to imitate by eating beef. And if you just look at red deer here, one of the biggest numbers I see is this 29. And that is your 18, uh, two carbon, uh, fat. Okay. This fat is linoleic acid. The very fat we're told by paleo and carnivore people that is bad, that we should be avoiding, this omega-6 fat. But as you can see with the deer, it's 30% of the fat content. Now this is maybe muscle meat. I don't know how they um, did this, but 30% of the red deer, okay? 27% of the roe deer. And then another... 30% down here, that's your saturated fat. So, I mean, there's other numbers here. Obviously, there's different types of fat, but there is a high amount of polyunsaturated omega-6 fat in wild red deer. And if we're just looking at different fats here, compared, comparing the fats, um, chicken fat, you have about 30% saturated, 22% polyunsaturated, and 47 monounsaturated. Not the same as wild, but a lot less saturated and more poly and mufa, mufa pufa and mufa. <laughs> and then lard has, um, you know, kind of the same, except a bit more saturated fat. And then a lot of these oils, um, they have less saturated fat and more PUFA. And, and these are the things we're told are driving obesity, are driving cancer, are driving all these issues. But this doesn't really make sense when you look at the, the content here of linoleic acid across the board here, 17, 18, 33, 
Like these are pretty high amounts. And again, the red deer is around 30. If we look at the saturated fat, MUFA, PUFA here, um, it's down here. So this line, here's the red deer. That's the saturated fat. MUFA is at eight. PUFA, PUFA is at 60, 60%. So your PUFA is very high. And then your omega-6 is at 30 and your omega-3 is at, or 39, 40 almost, and your omega-3 is at 21, okay? That is a high amount of PUFA in wild deer. And this is what we're emulating when we're eating these high meat diets for paleo and carnivore. Now, if you're looking, this is a great study actually, it's comparing the skeletal muscle to the offal of wild deer as well. And if you look down here, the saturated fat for muscle is around 30% they found. And for the offal, it's about 44 in the liver. Yes, that's definitely higher, definitely higher. But that's just the liver. The rest of the body kind of follows the same pattern of around 30% saturated fat and then all this PUFA. I'll show you more, more data in a second. But it's just the liver. We have to remember we're not just eating liver. We're eating... Um, we're eating beef that is much higher in saturated fat with no PUFA, like almost no PUFA. And if we look here, this is the PUFA content of the same thing. And the offals over here, the PUFA content here in the liver is 38%. And the kidney, I believe this was, and the, oh, the heart and the kidney. It's all in the 40s. The reason why I'm saying this is because PUFA is said to lower cholesterol. So if you're eating saturated fat with PUFA, it's much different than if you're eating saturated fat with MUFA, which is a more neutral oil, I would say. Maybe I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the impression I get. And then if you're eating it with PUFA, this is different. It's a different situation. And we're trying to emulate this um, on these high meat diets with our conventional meat, which is not the same. Now, different breeds do differ, okay? There are different breeds that are better. That's why I looked at the Wagyu and the Wagyu tends to be better for oleic acid, which is a MUFA, which is more neutral, and sometimes has a bit lower saturated fat, but it's not really that much lower. Um, so the breeds do differ, and between like packets of meat in the grocery store, you're gonna get different cuts, different different amounts of fat. But I'm just I'm just comparing this because I think this is important information that we're we're leaving out here. <laughs> and the last point I want to make about the Maasai is that they do have evidence of cardiovascular disease. So. Um, this is a study talking about how they believe um, all their walking, all their exercise is what protects them from heart disease. And this is a study. Now, this is from 1972. Um, but they did find that they... Um, the, measuring, the measurements of the aorta showed extensive, extensive atherosclerosis with lipid infiltration and fibrous changes, but very few complicated lesions. The coronary arteries showed intimal thickening by atherosclerosis, which equaled, equaled that of old U.S. men. Old U.S. men. They have the same arteries as old U.S. men. But it says here... The, the Maasai vessels enlarge with age to more than compensate for this disease. And, and the other study is thinking it's because they exercise so much that the vessels enlarge. So that protects them from this atherosclerosis. But it, it doesn't mean they don't have atherosclerosis, which is clogged arteries, right? They have clogged arteries. They just have such high physical fitness and I've read in other articles like they don't consume that many calories. So they're basically fasting and exercising all the time to survive on this diet. And I think it begs the question like how much do you need to exercise to make up for this cardiovascular disease if you are um, uh, predisposed to it? 
it says here he fasted, ate low carb, cut seed oils, did cardio and weights at least five times a week, five times a week. And his widow maker was 95% blocked. It says you can be in shape and have heart disease. He, this guy was in shape. He was exercising. And I think it's the risk. Maybe some people are okay taking, but personally, like this is why I'm doing these videos is because some people are not going to are not going to get great health from eating tons of conventionally grown meat with this high saturated fat, lack of PUFAs. And I know, I know, I never thought I'd be saying this, but the PUFAs lower the cholesterol. So if you are immune, uh, um, prone to heart, heart disease, the PUFAs are going to help you. So if you're eating wild game, that might be better. He decided to eat fish. So he's probably going to do better on fish. Who knows? I don't know. He's prone to heart disease. So that's why I feel compelled to make these videos because we're trying to imitate these diets based on hunter gatherers that, that don't really make sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't with our food system, with the food we have in our food system, Eating beef does not make sense to approximate a paleo diet. You'd be better off eating fish. The fish people are winning at all these longevity studies, you guys. Fish people beat vegans in these longevity studies. The fish people know what they're doing. <laughs> um, maybe chicken. Chicken's more mufa, so it doesn't really compensate for the saturated fat, but better. Um, if you can get wild game, get wild game. If you're a hunter, go hunting. But within our food system, like our foods are not the same as wild foods. We can't just take them and approximate um, the wild situation directly, if you know what I mean. You have to go with foods that are more similar and it might not make sense in your head because you think, oh, beef is going to be, or grass-fed beef is going to be like deer because deer eat grass and it's more natural and it's not always that way. And to approximate the natural world with our food system, like our fruit is messed up. Uh, it contains more sucrose, which kills your teeth with cavities. Our meat is different. It's just different. So you can't just go one for one. You can't just switch one for one and say, I'm eating a paleo diet. I'm eating a Maasai diet and expect to get the same results because you're not going to. Anyway, that's my video for today.